Yo, what's up ladies and gentlemen, good to see you again. And if you watched the video that we posted on Sunday, then you are well aware that the ban list is in effect. And I'm actually just taking this week to make up a couple of deck profiles that I personally had been playing very similar lists, if not these exact same lists on uh, some of the ranked simulator games, as well as testing at locals and stuff like that, you know, with proxy cards. And uh, yeah, I've really, just been kind of like wrapping my head around okay what are we what do we need to look out for now that um we don't have sakazuki as a threat but we also don't have great eruption in some of these lists as well as uh not having to thankfully deal with reject uh reject is is a card that definitely uh felt like crushed my hopes and dreams in a lot of matches on the sim <laughs> but um today i wanted to talk about perona uh, Perona is just an absolutely, oh my God, this leader is so fun. This leader is just so fun. I, I find it incredibly satisfying to play. Um, it does have frustrating matchups, but we'll get into that. However, I think it's just as far as a pure enjoy the game, you know, have a lot of fun mechanics, um, style of play. This is just great. It, it It's fantastic. But the green and black uh, combination was actually something I was very excited about simply because, you know, with cost reduction and having the ability to KO rested cards like a lot of the times green does, um, this is perfect for how Perona's leader effect works. And I tend to run more of a Navy and the Don Quixote uh, Pirates build. I know there's actually quite a lot of ways that you can build Perona. I've seen some very interesting uh, takes on deck lists, but so far this has been, in my opinion, kind of one of the more consistent uh, ways to play the list. And I, I just love it because if now that we know that Gecko Moria is not getting hit, this deck thrives off of four cost cards that are able to be played from trash and just gain almost immediate value. You also have some fantastic two cost cards in the list as well. And uh, yeah, I just want to go over kind of what I've been thinking about doing this uh, list like. So four of the Baby 5, of course. Uh, Baby 5, just being able to search out so many different cards in the deck. Uh, we actually have, I believe, 18 different hits for this, if I'm not mistaken. 18 Don Quixote Pirates. You could argue 17 because technically the one Baby 5 that you're playing is not going to be able to be searched so arguably 17 searches um suru for that 2k counter but it's also very useful to potentially play from trash with gecko moria but it's a navy type so searchable through brand new love it, it the card's not going anywhere anytime soon it's just a fantastic 2k counter um don quixote rosinante is amazing this is just a, a wonderful 2k or excuse me wonderful two cost blocker that is both navy and Don Quixote Pirates type. So you get best of both worlds there that it's very easily searchable. Um, it's a fantastic card to play off of Mori effect because whether it's rested or active, it can still gain value. If your opponent's swinging into some rested card, uh, that card cannot be KO'd and instead you can just trash this. So your opponent has to deal with this first. So even if it's rested, it's a pseudo blocker, which is amazing. And uh, yeah, th this card just gives you a lot of value in the list. Uh, Brand new helps you get some of those cards into trash. You're trying to get your Ryumas in there. Sometimes you're trying to get even like a Kuzan or maybe even the Rosinante that we just went over. <clears throat> but also being able to find a lot of the Navy type cards. I believe there are 23 hits that Brand new can get because it can't search itself. But I believe there are 23 uh, cards in the deck that can be picked up off this so fantastic all together and um, and then we have Ryuma. Ryuma is just amazing with your leader effect being able to rest any four cost card and then just be able to KO it with Ryuma. Um, obviously you can lower cards by using leader effect if you have an, if you don't need to rest it also using four cost Kuzan. Um, this just is a, a really annoying card for your opponent to deal with especially when they do ko it it they have to swing 
very particularly in order to KO this card, uh, or they have to have some form of removal um, that's maybe not based off of KOing it, but it can be very annoying, uh, especially if your opponent does make the mistake of swinging incorrectly. Uh, you just letting this card go and KOing one of their rested characters on your turn, or excuse me, their turn is unbelievably powerful. So just a 6k body that is uh, easily put into trash either through um, Sabo, through uh, the zero cost event, through brand new. It, it, it does its job, absolutely. And now four cost Kuzan, I run this at four. I've seen some lists that run this at maybe two. Um, I do think anywhere two to four is fine, but I do think two is a little greedy. This card just does work in Perona. It just does work. It's so good into the yellow matchup. It is so good into the mirror matchup and uh, just being able to deal with, you know, Gecko Moria's maybe even in uh, playing against the mono black Gecko Moria leader. This card really does handle a lot of those higher cost cards that you otherwise can't reach. Um, there is always also a sweet spot with having this card on the board and then using Brook, but we'll get to Brook here in just a second. I've also got four of the Blocker Borsalino. I mean, this card is just it's insane. For four cost from set two, this is probably forever going to be like the best black blocker in the game probably it's so good <laughs> it's also extremely necessary to play up against like mirror matches and stuff because if you don't have this card your opponent's probably just going to roll all over you and um yeah if you're playing up against the mirror i mean they can rest it obviously so in, in that respect you're like uh it didn't block for me or whatever yeah but it's a 6k body on their turn so your opponent usually has to kind of overcommit to try and get anything out of your hand or to even get the card off the board anyways. So very, very nice. And uh, X-Drake, I have at three. So X-Drake and Sabo, I actually have at three. I used to run them at four, but I started to run the zero cost event instead. Um, and part of that reason felt that I was having trouble uh, occasionally with getting Ryuma into trash. I would have like two Ryumas in hand and other cards that just had no counter. So it felt like I was kind of bricked up. So that zero cost event really did start to feel a little bit better than uh, the fourth X Drake. As much as I love this card, uh, it's amazing. Yet again, with being a Navy type card, searchable through brand new, um, it can't be brought back with Gecko Moria. So once it's kind of done its job, it's done its job. Uh, it's actually really solid in the mirror matchup though, just because your opponent is going to have a slightly harder time resting this card, KOing it, uh, depending on what they have going on. And then also, uh, into yellow, just being able to only have to dedicate one Dawn for a 7k swing into yellow is really undervalued it's so good even just attacking for six into yellow is great just because they can get the 2ks out of hand but eventually they're gonna they're gonna be out and they're just gonna be taking hits left and right uh vergo is as we were talking about with uh don quixote roshanante uh basically the best of both worlds you get the navy and don quixote searcher 2k counter it's not really played i don't really play this card um i think i've played it once uh, and that one time was just because I knew I needed an extra swing the turn after, and I knew that my board was probably going to get removed, so I didn't have any other options. So, Virgo, it's uh, not, it's just in there for a 2k, yeah. <clears throat> and Sabo, yet again, had this at 4, brought it down just for the zero cost event. I think of the blockers in the deck, this is the one that could be at 3. It it is very necessary to try and get cards into trash. It's also basically your answer into a lot of matches where your opponent kind of needs your blocker to be at that four cost threshold in order for them to get through. Uh, so Sabo just kind of does work in a lot of the meta. And I mean, you know you've played this card and if you haven't then you need to because the card is just great it, it feels fantastic it frees up bricked hands it provides your whole board with like a safety net and uh yeah it, it really does just kind of a, a great job 
but uh, Brooke. Brooke is in here because initially I actually I actually wasn't running this. I instead was running um, what was I running actually? I believe I believe I had either Ice Age or Great Eruption. One of the two. I was testing those out on just like getting things lower to KO with Ryuma and whatnot. But Brook just feels great. It, it, it's unfortunate that, you know, it's not searchable. Um, but it feels as though you draw into one of these per game usually. And, and if you don't, it's fine. It's not like you need it. But it's so solid into a lot of matches. Just being able to remove like in yellow, uh, getting rid of... Kikunoju without them getting the effect, getting rid of Pero Sparrow, uh, playing against Black, you're getting rid of Borsalino, right? Even with um, even with leader effect, getting rid of five cost cards. So goodbye Gadatsu, goodbye Sabo. Um, you know, you just get to trash them. It's not KOing a card, so they don't get any of the effect after being KO'd. Uh, it, it's really I undervalued this card at first. I won't lie. Um, and now I'm just super happy with it. Uh, there is also the second effect of being able to force your opponent to put three cards from their trash to the bottom of the deck in any order. It's like really, really niche. Um, I don't know. It's kind of like a random niche effect, but I've never used it. <laughs> Could be useful though in uh, certain situations where you're like, you know what? Let me take a look at your trash. You know what, if I return three, you can't loot you me next turn, and that's really the only solution that you would have. So, it, I, I don't know, kind of a random one. But uh, Gecko Moria at four, of course, this list just kind of runs around uh, being able to play Gecko Moria on curve into a bunch of Don Quixote Doflamingos, just 10 cost after 10 cost after 10 cost if possible. Uh, so this card is unbelievable. Being able to bring back Kuzan, Ryuma, and then put out potentially Brandu uh, or even Suru or Rosinante. Um, it's, it does everything you want. You know, you can get the blocker, you can get a body on board. Um, Gekko Mori is just very, very strong in this list. And going into the 10 cost, uh, yeah, once you get to 10 cost, if you're able to chain these safely with like, shoot, even maybe like one to two life, uh, you optimally, at that point in the game, will probably already have one, if not two, blockers. So, that's, uh, yeah, this, this card just kind of works for you afterwards. Uh, it just starts setting up the rest of the game. And playing this card back-to-back uh, -back feels fantastic. However, um, there was times before where I didn't enjoy it as much playing into yellow because I was hit with a reject and then... Um, you know, having a 10 mom that was played the turn prior swing into me. But now that we don't have to deal with reject, uh, this still stops like a lot of your opponent being able to get that life off of you uh, because you probably already have some blocker on board or something like that. Just reject being able to circumnavigate you having that blocker was very, it was very annoying. And sometimes I didn't want to see the 10 costs in those matches as much as I wanted to see other cards. Uh, and then I have the zero cost event. I was talking about this before, but just being able to get Ryuma into trash, shoot, even Kuzan sometimes, you, you have like three in hand and you're like, okay, I don't need three. So just get out of a 7k swing or even help you get out of a larger attack. It's it's a really nice, uh, really nice event. Also being able to be picked up off baby five. Uh, I personally really enjoyed this list. I like how it plays. It does feel as though you do have to have some fairly decent decision making though, because if you do make a wrong uh, wrong play, which I've done countless amount of times now, um, it team it it seems that you have a tough time getting back into the match. So you really want to try and focus on controlling the board early in the match, and then once you have your own established uh, board, then you can start going for life. But other than that, I'm not really trying to go for life too much unless I'm playing against yellow. Then I'm kind of ignoring what they have on board until I have potentially better removal cards like Brook, um, X Drake, Ryuma in combination with like Kuzan. Uh, but a lot of the times in that matchup, I tend to block her up quite a bit and then play Kuzan as safely as possible 
wait for the right time. I get that Gecko Moria combination off and it just starts to snowball from there. But I would love to hear y'all's thoughts. Let me know what you think about Perona. Is this one of the leaders you're excited about playing? And uh, yeah, over the next few days, I should have a deck profile for Yamato, Reiju, as well as Katakuri. So I'll have a couple more coming out for this week. And uh, I'll catch y'all in the next one, all right? Peace.